$500 off right now or 48 months no interest. Call 888-78-PELLA or PellaPittsburgh.com. Hugh Hewitt has campaign advice for the president. The president needs to go back to his 2016. Like on CNN, he was on with Chuck Dodd. He's got to do every show, give him an hour to dominate television again. The Hugh Hewitt Show, weekday mornings at 6, right before Mike Gallagher at 9 on AM 1250. The Answer. Okay, so picture this. You get home from work tonight and your phone rings. Uh, might be your line if you still have one of those but your your phone one of your phones rings and it's your congressman let's say even though that's far-fetched because he's been invisible since election day and never returns phone calls or emails but with you know hi connor lamb here and then he says listen uh just wondering well which um which what's your health insurance uh and you say, you know, UPMC, AGH, whatever you got. Okay, I just want to let you know that uh, today's Friday, but as of Monday, I will be in charge of your health insurance. Not necessarily me personally, but the federal government will be in charge of your health care, and uh, you, whatever your uh, carrier happens to be, uh, you, you might protest. Uh, we're the Democrats, and we we control the House, and uh, we got it through the Senate, and so um, we now have uh, health care for everybody. And your a UPMC, AGH, whatever you might have, is illegal. You're not allowed to have it anymore. Uh, so we'll be taking care. Of it. It'll be as efficient and fair as the Department of Motor Vehicles. You won't have, you know, don't worry about any long lines or anything, you know, and you uh, you can probably keep your doctor and, uh, you know, just don't worry about it. And uh, you're done. You're out. You don't have any recourse. That's it. You can't have health insurance. And maybe you say, well, what if I go out and buy my own um, health insurance? And, you know, to supplement whatever you guys are going to do with the government. Uh, no, we're just, uh, that's not going to work. For our plan to work for universal health care, uh, we're, we're just going to have to get rid of, um, you know, any, any kind of private insurance. We, we can't have that. Now, that sounds ridiculous, but that's exactly what happens to you if the Democrats, who all raised their hands last night uh, when asked about it, want to see the end of private health insurance, which one of you, raise your hand if you uh, believe that, and they all raised their hands, all 10 of them. And the front page in the New York Post had a picture of them with their hands raised, and the headline said, raise your hand if you want to lose the election. And that's what they're going to do. So that's how it works. It's a, it's a longer process than the one I described, but that's how it works if it becomes, uh, if, if, you're, if you're told that you're no longer allowed to have health insurance, that's how it works. And uh, you might not have Connor Lamb call you personally, but that's, you'll, get no, you'll get the notice. You're out. No more. We are in charge, not you. Meanwhile, the highlight of the debate last night was Kamala Harris getting all over Joe Biden for saying he got along with segregationists. And then she said this. Not only that, but you also work. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Yeah, it was her. And uh, she's getting rave reviews now, of course, for that. It was all planned by her. And Joe's getting trashed. But Joe was right. Busing didn't work. And when we come back, I'll have a guy here who worked for two Democrats, Governor and Hubert Humphrey, and a civil rights leader, Julian Bond. And he Joe was right last night and why busing was a bad idea. Stick around. Every day I get the cue. How 
Cause she's only another mile Recent storms have done a number on Pittsburgh homes and businesses. This is John Stagerwald. If you've had damage to your roof, windows, siding, or gutters and downspouts, you may be eligible to get them replaced or repaired free of charge. All you have to do is visit windowsruspittsburgh.com for a free inspection from one of their highly trained appraisers. With over 50 years in home remodeling, Windows R Us is the area's premier exterior replacement company for roofs, siding, gutters and downspouts, doors, and of course windows. If damage isn't your issue and you just want something new, you'll love their no-pressure approach, no hidden fees, and one of the fastest turnaround times in the industry. Why pay? Visit the area's premier exterior replacement company at windowsoruspittsburgh.com. Mention STAG for an additional 10% off at windowsoruspittsburgh.com. That's windowsoruspittsburgh.com. Windows R Us, proud sponsor of the Jerk of the Week, heard every Friday right here on the John Steigerwald Show. windowsoruspittsburgh.com. We've been telling you about something called Miracles in Moon for a few weeks here, and uh, the president and CEO, Mike Magolik, joins us. Thanks for having us, John. All the support. Mike, your son has a genetic disorder that makes him one who will appreciate this field, right? Yeah, that's correct. Our youngest son, Luke, has a rare genetic disease called 5P-. minus. About 30 to 35 kids a year in the U.S. are born with wow, it. Wow, that's all. Um, yeah, so the main reason that we're building this field with the help of the community is that we want everyone to have a team, everyone to use a restroom with the dignity that they deserve, mm -hmm. and have families to have a safe place to play. You're not getting any federal taxpayer money here, right? So this is all donations that's going to get this thing done? Yeah, that's correct. Everyone talks about how great the our board can definitely go to the website. Check it out at miraclesinmoon.org. Miraclesinmoon.org. Are you a stock or options trader looking for real trading strategies that you can use immediately? Hi, my name is Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy, and I'm on a mission to become the number one options coach in America. I'm a former vice president at Goldman Sachs. I have over 25 years of options trading experience, and right now, I'm giving away my most To claim your free options trading guide, simply call 855-892-2307 now and mention my name, Scott Bauer, and we will rush you the guide. Call 855-892-2307 and someone from my options team will help you get this guide in your inbox as quickly as possible. Call 855-892-2307 now and start learning to trade the right way. Call 855-892-2307. 2307 Prosper. This trading involves financial risk and is not suitable for all investors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Faith Publishing helps thousands of authors just like you publish their books with a company dedicated to strong Christian values. To help you get started, we want to send you our free author submission kit. Christian Faith Publishing reviews every book submitted to us. And if your book is approved, we'll edit, design, print, and distribute your book online and in bookstores everywhere. Imagine seeing your book in specialty Christian bookstores, Amazon, iTunes, Barnes & Noble, and many others. It could happen. And it all starts with one call to Christian Faith Publishing at 800-566-1012 for your free author submission kit. If you have a novel, children's book, poetry, biography, or any inspirational work you've written, we can can help you gain. Shouldn't you work with a publisher who shares your Christian values of integrity and honesty? You can get your book published. So call for your free author submission kit right now. Call 800 566 1012. That's 800 566 1012. 800 566 1012. You're listening to The John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250. The answer. That she may have made herself the front runner. She criticized Joe Biden for saying a couple of weeks ago that early in his career he was able to get along well with segregationists, even though he really disagreed with them. And then she hit, uh, hit him for being opposed to busing, and the media seemed to have awarded her the win based on all of that. Ted Van Dyke was a senior policy advisor to Democratic candidates for over 40 years. He was an assistant to Vice President Hubert Rose, Hacks and Fools, and he joins us now. Uh, Ted, thanks for being here. John, my pleasure. So, uh, did you see, first of all, I, I guess I should ask if you saw the debate last night. Uh, yes, I did. And so what was your reaction when, when uh, Senator Harris was beating up on Joe Biden or trying to? Well, I think uh, maybe she's 
a little bit. I think on the uh, on the issue of busing, uh, it was a cheap shot, and maybe it has to do with uh, generational differences. But you know, I was there in the middle of the civil rights movement, and when we passed the Great Society legislation, and uh, afterward, and busing was an idea that came after uh, court uh, desegregation rulings. And many people thought, well, let's desegregate schools artificially. Let's not worry about neighborhoods. It's to white neighborhoods and white kids to black neighborhoods, and we'll hasten the process. Well, the trouble was that just about everywhere it was tried, uh, both black and white parents preferred that their kids stay in neighborhood schools. And uh, they preferred quality neighborhood schools rather than putting their kids in buses, sending them away. Uh, to alien neighborhoods. So it fizzled out, and, it, and uh, I don't know of any place where busing turned out to be a success. It was tried a lot of places. Apparently, uh, Harris went to school. But uh, uh, to, to paint Joe as some kind of uh, racist or play a race card against him on that one, I thought was really bad for him. Uh, you wrote a piece for Politico uh, uh, back in uh, 2015, I think it was, defending Biden on this subject. The headline yeah. was, uh, school busing didn't work, and to say so isn't racist. What was it back then that uh, and in other words, each community decided whether it wanted to do busing or not. It was entirely optional. Some some cities did it. Some communities did not. And uh, she tried to make it seem that he somehow was racist for opposing uh, busing. Well, and I, I think they uh, last night she she wanted to, to uh, she referred to being you know, uh, a little too hungry, a little ready to say anything that benefits her. And I think she tried to play a race card there, that, and that probably caught Joe Biden by surprise. Yeah, but uh, but I think that what the the fact that she she was uh, making it into a racial thing um, exactly, and it was a totally unmerited. It was you know uh, not right, as I say. I think it was a cheap shot. There was no racism in it at all. It fizzled out because it did not work. People went to neighborhood schools. And uh, to claim that uh, to oppose uh, anything but embrace busing was racist, that's, that's nuts. Well, what I thought, what I didn't like was that she, she tried to make the fact that it was local into a racial thing because she said something like, uh, our people, many people have been affected adversely by states uh, that need to be over overruled by the federal government. I think she's going way back to well, know, the yeah, state's yeah, rights. That busing was an issue, which was local. And Joe, uh, he should have just said what I just said, which is it didn't. It was tried. It was an idea. It didn't work. It had to be abandoned for the following reasons. But instead, he took the technical defense, saying, well, it was a local option thing, uh, not national, and she misrepresented it. I, uh, I read your piece and then went back and listened to what he said again, the piece that you wrote back in 2015, and I, my, my conclusion was that, was that last night he was right, and he did a good, actually did a good job of defending himself. He did, uh, but he, I think he would have done even better had he pointed out the history of busing and how it was abandoned and how most civil rights, rights leaders, in fact, gave up on it, mm -hmm. uh, rather than citing the technical issue. It was local. Yeah. Well, they they were hesitant. Some were outrightly against uh, two things. One, uh, you to force this uh, was premature. In other words, uh, segregation was outlawed. On the other hand, people still wanted to live live and have their kids go to school in their neighborhoods, and to artificially lift kids out of their neighborhoods and send them somewhere miles away. Uh, uh, people with common sense said, "Wait a minute, that's probably not going to work," and it didn't. And uh, I was also policy director for McGovern in 72. Uh, he took the same view. He was very, very skeptical of busing. Uh, some people during that period in the black community said, well, maybe it's a benefit for us. Let's try it. But it soon wore out. And uh, I don't know whether it was tried in Pittsburgh or not or what the results were. But in most cases, it didn't work and was discredited. Yeah, I don't remember it. Uh, I've been here all my life and in, uh, in the
Um, yeah, one, one of the things, just as a practical, uh, here I was, big civil rights guy, and yeah. I, we were living in D.C. at the time. The D.C. But about half the school, the kids back to their black neighborhoods immediately after school was out. They didn't participate in any school activity. But is uh, is a totally worthless exercise. There's a lot of that happening with the government, and so that's not unusual. It does, it does, and the same thing with identity politics now, which has kind of overtaken us. Where, you know, we, we you talked to you about the early civil rights era. The aim there was to make race and gender and all other factors irrelevant. Everybody the same. Everybody treated justly. Uh, and now that politics have taken a turn where uh, race, gender, uh, legislation. He was a senior policy advisor to uh, Democratic candidates for over 40 years, uh, author of a book uh, uh, detailing his work in politics starting in, back in 1960. It's called yeah. Heroes, Hacks, and F uh, Fools. Um, how, uh, do, do, are you uh, a, a bipartisan when it comes to um, labeling heroes, hacks, and fools? Well, I, I, I just tell them that I saw it, and I, it's mainly about Democrats. You'll see some Republicans in there. I got... I was on the Nixon enemies list, for instance, and I ran afoul. So uh, you'll you'll see uh, some criticism in there, but I'm not somebody who hates the opposition. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all citizens together. Uh, some people are Democrats, others are Republicans, and we've got to get along. Well, I'm I'm surprised that uh, if, I don't know. Maybe you have, but have, have you gotten any other requests from people to talk to you about this? To kind of not on this issue. I, I get periodic. I write about oh once every couple months for the Wall Street Journal regularly. And usually when I write something there, I get some immediate calls. I got some uh, last week on a piece I'd written at the end of May. Uh, that I'm I'm 85 years old now and uh, semi-retired, so I do I'm less active than I once was. But my brain hasn't left me yet. So yeah, you, you sound sound pretty feisty to me. I'm no kid either, but you <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with you. Um, well, yeah, I know I know what I, I've been in it a long time and know what I'm doing, and and I regret some of the changes that have taken place. Uh, I sound like an old timer, but no, I know uh, both the, both the leaders and the objectives in politics used to be far higher level. I mean, we're really at a low low point down on all fours uh, period right now, and uh, it's it's sad. We'll work through it. We've gone through these periods before, and the American people have a a basic common sense to them, but it's pretty low right now. I um I I it took me about I don't know a minute and a half to find your piece. I I Googled, I googled. Uh, uh, busing didn't work, and yeah. there it was. And I can't think of anybody in the country right now better than you to talk to on this subject, especially after what happened in the debate last night. That's why I thought I hit the gold mine when I, uh, you know, found a gold yeah. mine when I when I saw the piece because well, I think uh, Harris took a cheap shot and and tried to paint Joe Biden as something he is not, which is uh, in any way a racist or, uh, you know, he was a active civil rights advocate in his own state, too, Delaware, which is a tough state for civil rights. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he, if I were in his shoes, I would have responded a little more avidly and immediately uh, instead of giving a Are you still a Democrat? Oh, yeah. Now, what would Hubert Humphrey and the Kennedy brothers think of what's going on in the Democratic Party right now? Well, I tell you, I talked to a lot of uh, old colleagues from from the Kennedy and Humphrey camps, but very similar people, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much appalled. Really? Yeah. How do we propose to meet those needs? Then how do we propose to uh, convince a majority of the people in the Congress to accept what we think? Now, uh, it's watch the polls. How do I make my my uh, partisan opponent look bad in the next twenty four hours? That's a long, large, higher agenda, and that's really, really 
what is disappointing. Would Hubert Humphrey or JFK get the nomination in 2020? Yeah, because they're a lot smarter and at a higher level than the people now running. <laughs> no, but I mean, if the, if they were espousing what they espoused then or not... Well, yeah, es- see, they were strong enough, they would have guided opinion. They would have been leaders rather than followers. Mm-hmm. All the guys right now in the, in the race, uh, regrettably, have got the fingers in the air saying, what do the activists in the party in the early primary and caucus states think, and how can I get their votes in those early primary and caucus states? And a Kennedy or Humphrey would start out by saying... Uh, what do I believe the country needs, and how do I convince people to do it? And they would forcefully go out and do it, and they would get support, but in mechanical. And uh, tell me this too. I mean, I, I'm, I was a kid in 1960, and I, I, I remember watching. I was about 11 years old. I remember watching the the convention, uh, both yeah. conventions, and JFK. And I, I, there were I can't remember the specifics about that that night, but back then you didn't know who was going to be the nominee necessarily until. I don't know. A couple of days into the convention, yeah, and it was a, it was a different process. Of course, right. there were more there were more uh, uh, delegates then chosen in state conventions and caucuses, and uh, very few in primaries. Right. And now it's the opposite. So when you come into the convention, typically you know who the nominee is already going to be. But there was a kind of wisdom to that uh, earlier process because the people who made the ultimate selections were those who were professionals, were office holders, who uh, were involved in day to day politics. Uh, they didn't walk off the street in an election year, so uh, there's there was a. I would never go back to the kind of brokered convention and, mm-hmm. and non primaries. But what I would do is at least have regional primaries, uh, which had some rationality to them, and you'd move from one part of the country to the other, and the candidates and the people in those regions would get to know each other and their issues. Now, uh, so much rides on who does what in the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primary, neither state representative of the country, and uh, but. Go you know, ahead. It's, Sorry. It's, it's not right. Well, many people be business on the stage. Problem two in twenty six. Trump, as you well know, uh, very early on in the Republican uh, uh, process, uh, four years ago, mm-hmm. so he got disproportionate coverage. I mean, the media went a long way toward nominating him, and uh, he got a break that way. Now they'll do it again. Accusations against him. She's very feisty and aggressive. You can bet that media will begin giving her disproportionate coverage because they figure she'll create controversy, yep. she'll draw audience. No thought to, to fairness or what's in public interest. I have uh, less than a minute, and I'm up against a hard break. You know how that works. If you can tell me in 30 seconds, among that group of 20 that we've seen, can any of them beat Donald Trump? And if so, who would that be? I'd say any one of several of them could beat Trump if they if they pull themselves together and, and uh, get a coherent message because Trump is there to be beaten. Uh, but there has to be somebody who's a, who's a satisfactory alternative. I think as the process goes on, somebody will emerge. I couldn't tell you who yet. Well, they ought to hire you to advise them on the campaign. <laughs> well, look, I'll talk to them on the phone for millions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ted. I really appreciate it. Yes, John. My pleasure. Okay, that's Ted Van Dyke, and he's one of the best guests we've had in a long time. That was really good stuff, and we will be ready in California. With SRN News, I'm Ron DeRochstrup. Democrats have come up short in their effort to place new limits on President Trump as he tries to stave off growing hostility from Iran. Senators apparently listened when Leader Mitch McConnell said of the Udall Amendment. It should be soundly rejected. Calling it half-baked, a product of Trump derangement syndrome, and calling on Democrats to stop obsessing about Donald Trump for a moment. And realize placing new restrictions on the president could put the U.S. in danger. Do not embolden Iran. Do not weaken our deterrence. Next stop for the Defense Authorization Act, the Democrat-controlled House. Bob Agnew reporting. A high-stakes immigration case on the Supreme Court docket for next session before the presidential election. 
Justices say they'll decide whether President Trump can terminate an Obama-era program shielding young migrants from deportation, a decision likely by June 2020. This is SRN News. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of people have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Harrys.com and enter 3366 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 3366. Enjoy. Larry Elder says Joe Biden is getting a pass. But I know where his heart is. Yeah. Uh, Joe uh, doesn't feel uh, that way at all. Hey, I, I know where his heart is, says Clyburn. And Sharpton says, hey, people sometimes say things that don't really reflect what they are. You he know? may say things that doesn't reflect what he really means. Well, right. We must prove that to people. But zero tolerance for Trump. The Larry Elder Show. Weeknights at 7, right before Joe Walsh at 9 on AM 1250. The Answer. Do you or your business have financial problems? Are you overwhelmed with debt? Then call me, Attorney Dennis Spire at 412-471-7675. My legal practice concentrates on bankruptcy law, debtor rights, and tax matters. I have over 30 years' experience as a former United States Department of Justice bankruptcy attorney and lawyer in private practice. I have represented thousands of cases faced with financial problems and lawsuits. Reorganize and get a fresh start. Call 412-471-7675 or visit my website at DennisSpira.com. Community Bank. City Mission. Number one con. Highmark Stadium, Peters Township Community Center, Angelo's Restaurant. What do all these businesses have in common? Nello Construction, design and build with one company. Nello Construction, full service construction from the ground up. Renovation, expansion. Are you worried that the next market downturn could rob you of your wealth and your security? Are you concerned that your lifetime may last longer than your life savings? You don't have to be. For over 30 years, Gary Hunt has advocated for strong retirement principles, helping families in Allegheny and Westmoreland generate more income while protecting their retirement funds. And Gary now offers retirement-minded savers and investors a free book so you can better understand what it takes to structure a review your estate planning documents to ensure they protect what matters most. At Abernathy & Hagerman, we will work with you to establish an estate plan that nominates a guardian for your minor children. Help that lasts a lifetime? Visit a-h.law. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. Dealing with lots of heavy volume this Friday afternoon. Parkway West slows down inbound Carnegie to the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Outbound, very busy Roslyn Farms Road out to 60. Parkway East outbound is heavy from Bates Street to Edgewood Swissvale. Looks like typical volume on the inbound side. Northbound 79 really slows down Mount Nebo Road up to 910. And outbound 28 delays Parkway North to the Highland Park Bridge. That's a look at traffic. I'm Jenny Robinson. AM 1250, the answer, weather. Hardly cloudy tonight, warm and muggy, lows right around 70 degrees. A mixture of clouds and sun for tomorrow, quite warm and humid. With a couple of thunderstorms around in the afternoon, but the storms could produce some locally damaging winds and flash flooding. High tomorrow, 85, low tomorrow night, 66. Sunday, a blend of sun and clouds, breezy and becoming less humid, high 81 degrees. With the Iraqi weather forecast, I'm meteorologist Danielle Niddle. The John Steigerwall Show, AM 1250, The Answer. Now, it's time for The Jerk of the Week, starring John Steigerwald. 
Well, this is a tough week. I mean, how can you pick just one jerk when 20 lunatics are involved in a debate? Lots of choices, but I have to settle on Julian Castro for saying this Wednesday night when he was asked about abortion. Just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor, doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. Uh, Right, he couldn't bring himself to just talk about women and abortion. He had to include men who think they're women because, you know, the trans community. The most amazing thing about it was that not one of the other jerks on the panel batted an eye. But Julian said it, and he wins the prize, Jerk of the Week. The Jerk of the Week is brought to you by Windows R Us, Pittsburgh's premier exterior replacement company. Expert repair and replacement for Windows. Visit windows.com. Oh, I'm back. I was waiting for. Uh, there I am. No, uh, it's Friday, and we have a segment here with no guests. So uh, if you want to give me a call, go ahead, um, 844-302-1250 um, on anything you've heard today. I, that, uh, the last guest we had, he just, you talk about hitting it out of the park. 85 years old. You want to mess with him? Ted Van Dyke. Um, and he's an old-style politician. You talk about old school. A guy from the 60s, a Hubert Humphrey-type Democrat, a Ted Kennedy, or not a Ted Kennedy, a John F. Kennedy Democrat, and um, he, he actually makes, you know, common sense, has some common sense, and the, Democrat, uh, the Democratic Party would be wise to just call him up and bring him in, pay him a lot of money. He, of course, he'd be telling a lot of people to get lost, and they might not like that. Uh, he might want to. Uh, I asked him, and I, I, I didn't have time to get into him uh, specifically about what I'm about to tell you here because this is Democrats on the state level in California, where uh, the stuff that comes out of California is just the stupidity is just beyond belief. Uh, this is California Senate Bill 132. This is uh, Thirty-two, sponsored by State Senator Scott Weiner or Weiner uh, of uh, San Francisco, it requires men who say they are women. Be ready for this to be housed in women's prisons. Now I'm going to stop right there because I'm thinking about men who are, um, I, you know, screwed up enough to be in prison in the first place. Okay, you did something, and I mean, some people go to prison for things that maybe they didn't do or. Uh, but it just in general, if you're in prison and you've been there a long time, you're probably you probably got some issues. So if you're if you find out that they've just passed a law <laughs> that says, listen, you've been in prison here for about five or six years, you haven't seen a woman other than you know the cafeteria lady or the or the you know I don't know staff, and you know you might be interested in you know having some contact with women every now and then after you haven't seen one or been close to one for years. They just passed a law that says that if you say you think you're a woman, we'll put you in a woman's prison. You might find things a little bit different over there for you. Well, anyway, state, so uh, that's what's happened. The state uh, Senate bill uh, passed the bill in May. It's uh, Bill 132. Very little opposition, by the way. It was passed on June 25th. What's today? It's just like only three days ago or something. Yeah. The bill demands that the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation ask prisoners their preferred pronouns. So if you've committed murders, raped a few women along the way, maybe some armed robbery, and you've decided that you want to be called, I don't know, now I'm guessing, it doesn't say here in the story, but I'm guessing that the pronouns would not just be limited to, you know, she, her, him, he, it's all those other ones that that I don't even want to know about, but... Uh, so I'm guessing that you have to tell this, you have to, if this murderer is not addressed with the proper pronoun, he's going to have some recourse. Um, so this means that a man need only say at intake, it says here, that he is a woman to gain access to women's prison. And in passing the bill, California has turned its back 
on incarcerated women. This is what it says. This is this is from the bill itself. The legislative's legislative council's digest. Here's what it says. The bill would require staff and contractors to consistently use the gender pronoun and honorific an individual has specified in verbal and written communication. I don't know. What's an honorific? I have no idea. The bill would require the department for a person who has a gender identity that differs from their sex assigned at birth to only conduct the search of that person by an officer of the gender identity of the person's preference. So if you... <laughs> If you're a man and you you said I identify as a woman, when you show up at the prison and they, you know, I, you've, I don't know, you've said the scene in movies what they make you do when you show up at a prison. It's pretty nasty what they ask you to do. And uh, it's a man if it's a man's prison and it's a woman if it's a woman's prison for obvious reasons. Uh, but under this bill, if you show up at a prison and you're a man and you are a biological man and you are to be... Uh, padded down, I guess is the uh, the term or whatever it is. You you can say, oh no, I don't want to be padded down by a woman. I'm a woman. I mean, I don't want to be. Yeah, I don't want to be padded down by a a man. I'm a woman, and vice versa. So you go in there, and a woman, uh, a man comes in to check you out because they know you're actually, you know, even though what you think you might be, you're <laughs> you're actually a man. And so they say, well, you know, maybe the, a woman doing this might be a little uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So let's just have you know, a man do it. And you say, oh, no, if you do that, I will sue you because uh, I, it's under the law, Bill 132, that I have to be, I have to be frisked, patted down, whatever it is, by a, the gender that I identify with, not the gender that's similar to the one that it's obvious that I am. So... That's, uh, that's the way that turned out. And then um, while the hearing uh, before the assembly featured many groups, it says here, only two people spoke in opposition to the whole to the thing. And uh, this writer, uh, Libby Emmons, she speculates that uh, that's a good chance that it's because people are afraid, actually afraid to say that they think it's ridiculous. That's where we are now. You're afraid to bring up uh, and say what I just said, that it's absolutely insane. Saying nobody wants to say it. So, and by the way, there's no exceptions here for uh, convicted rapists. So it says uh, here in this piece, because the legislation mandates that prison guards and officials use an inmate's preferred pronouns unfailingly, there may be an expense associated with lawsuits of trans individuals suing guards and officials for misgendering. They can sue the guard. You're in prison for 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 murder, okay? And you can sue the guard for looking at you <laughs> and, and saying he when you, you know, you're a he. Uh, and so they're going to get, that's going to be an expense involved. While men who wish to be women may opt to be housed in women's prisons, no woman in her right mind, whether she lives as a man or not, would opt to be imprisoned with men. You wouldn't think. Uh, that's according to the Libby here. But there are no exceptions to make sure that men who have committed violent or sexual crimes against women are not placed in prison. Women. These are Democrats, everybody. This is this is in California. Law. It's been passed. It's a law. Bill 132. No exceptions to make sure that men who have committed violent or sexual crimes against women are not placed in prison with women. So somebody came up with a crazy idea. Said, "Look, how about this? Maybe the." What if we had, like, uh, an area in the prison just for trans people, transgender people? And uh, the problem with that is when asked why it wouldn't be better to have separate facilities for trans prisoners, those in support claimed that new facilities for transgender individuals would make transgender people seem like aliens. Uh, I'd, I'd be tempted to say that they may seem like that already, but I would never say that. So... Placing convicted rapists with women in prison is fine to that, but because rapes already happen in women's prisons at the hands of prison guards, it doesn't matter that much. So they're going to get raped anyway. It's basically... ...in their delusion that they are women. Uh, and then here's the other thing that they run into. Again, this is a law. 
Once transgender inmates are housed and classified by gender identity as opposed to biological sex, crimes they commit in prison are cataloged with the stats of the opposite sex. So if a person who is actually a man but thinks he's a, wo a woman rapes a woman, they uh, apparently what this is saying here is that when they catalog, not be cataloged as a woman being raped by a man or a transgender, it'll be a woman being raped by another woman. Uh, so... I guess that makes it just about impossible to keep track of who's doing what once you put them in there. So this is already going on in New Zealand. They've tried this. Uh, Canada made it uh, uh, made this change on a federal level in 2018, and they had a, a person uh, jailed in a named Hayden Patterson will soon be extradited to the United States to be tried for a murder charge. asked to be placed in a woman's prison, but balked when told that Patterson must consistently demonstrate female gender expression to remain in the women's facility. So he's got to act like a woman if he really wants to pull it off. And uh, so Patterson was worried, are you ready for this, that not shaving would violate this condition. So he doesn't want to you know, he's afraid he might grow a beard because he's, you know, a man, and that would make him look like a man. So here in the United States, the Trump administration rolled back the policies allowing male-bodied persons to be housed in women's prison, in women's prisons. Ch transgender rights activists, you know what they called this? A violation of human rights. And that was made after that move was made after female prisoners in Texas filed a lawsuit saying that it was unlawful to imprison men with women. So there take you to the big house. You don't like it there. Maybe you'd like to have some fun with the ladies. All you do is just say you're a, you know what, I'm, I'm identifying as a woman and you um, situations. I making yourself look like a woman. Um, because it would be pretty, wouldn't it be pretty easy to just wake up uh, Monday morning and say, you know what, I heard about this law. Uh, I mean, I've been thinking about it. I'm a woman. I'm now identifying as a woman. So you need to, you need to, you need to get me out of here. Put me over there. Uh, I'll be happy to, you know, move immediately. So that's, and, and here's the thing. This is the Democrat. And the, the, Cali the uh, Gavin Newsom, the governor out there, former mayor of San Francisco, I would be willing to bet a lot of money that he is perfectly okay with what I just described here. Um, obviously, there are lots of politicians who are because they passed the bill, and this is America in 2019, and I don't know how any sane person could vote for someone party uh, when they see stuff like this, and it's happening everywhere. So I, I got, uh, I have a little bit of time left. I want to uh, take a break here, and then I, I, I have some, I might even get our, our producer, Aaron Byrne on the air to contribute to our next segment. Stick around. We'll be right back. Have you heard the crack of the bat, the cheers of the crowd? Have you seen the smiles on the faces of the players as they take the field? I'm not talking about the Pirates. I'm talking about what's happening in Moon Township that can only be described. This is John Stagerwald. With the help of Pirates Charities and people like yourself, the Miracle League of Moon Township has broken ground on a brand new ball field and adaptive playground where athletes with special needs can play regardless of their ability. At miraclesinmoon.org, you can see the stunning plans for the 9,500 square foot playground and state-of-the-art ADA compliant restroom facility with showers, wave technology, multi-level fountains and sinks, mechanical changing tables and more. It's incredible. Our goal? 
to raise the remaining funds they need to bring it home by first pitch this September. Check it out at miraclesinmoon.org slash donate and make your tax-deductible gift today. That's miraclesinmoon.org slash donate. This message paid for by Robinson Town Center, a Zamias Properties entity. Once upon a time, many years ago, customers would find your business with this big, thick book full of phone numbers and competitors' phone numbers. It was a heavy, cumbersome, yellowish-looking thing. The book and hope would call. Hello? We've come. Our team at Salem Surround can guide you through all the available options with the expertise to manage all your digital marketing under one roof so you can spend time taking care of your customers. Get started with a free evaluation of your digital presence and some great ideas to increase your online visibility and revenue. With Salem Surround, there are no limitations on how and where you can reach customers. Learn more at Surround. Perspective about your place in the world. Think it would be worth it? Dennis Prager here inviting you to join me for a 10-day Stand with Israel tour. A tour through the land of Israel in December 2019. Come with me to get first-hand insight into Israel's fascinating past and promising future. Walk the ancient temple steps, sail on the Sea of Galilee, and so many more unforgettable moments. Return home inspired, renewed, and empowered. If you've ever dreamed of seeing Israel, this is your opportunity with Visit Key Sites. We'll be together in the comfort and safety of luxurious accommodations the whole time. Join me for a life-changing adventure to give you a renewed sense of purpose. Get more details about the trip or sign up now to join Mike Gallagher and Dennis Prager on the Stand with Israel tour by going to theanswerpgh.com slash Israel. That's theanswerpgh.com slash Israel. You watch what you eat. You're hitting the gym. You're doing your best to live a healthy life. But did you know that a bad night's sleep and a mattress can have a big impact on your health? Here at the Original Mattress Factory, our hand-built mattresses made of the highest quality materials provide the comfort and support needed to provide healthy sleep for years to come. To learn more about how the right mattress can help you achieve healthy sleep habits, visit OriginalMattress.com or stop by an Original Mattress Factory store near you. The gimmicks, the flashy sales, and the big markups. Mattress stores have made the mattress shopping experience confusing on purpose. Ron Trzinski started the original mattress factory to create a better way. He raised the bar on quality, offered hand-built mattresses for a fraction of the cost, and ditched the high-pressure sales tactics, all to create a better mattress buying experience for you. You could say he was the original disruptor. Stop by an original mattress factory store or visit us at originalmattress.com to see the OMF difference for yourself. This is the John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250, The Answer. Okay, I came across uh, Moneyline.com. It says, uh, these brands you love may soon disappear forever. How we interact with technology. Now, which I've been drinking during the show, uh, Jack Daniels. No, uh, Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. So uh, our uh, producer, Aaron Byrne, is one of them millennials. Are you 30 yet? Yeah, I just turned 30. Okay. Uh, so, a few days ago. Yeah, okay. So Diet Pepsi. Uh, no more. You ever, when was the last time you had a Diet Pepsi? Oh, geez. Probably at my grandparents' house, like, years ago. It's, okay. I'm talking years, like five yeah. years. Well, I had one, like, three minutes ago. So that's just... That's, <laughs> Crocs, they're gone. You ever had a pair of Crocs? Never. Use. Never owned a Crocs. See, now, I was out in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, 15 years ago at least, and I went into this place out there where we used to go to buy, like, outdoor stuff, and I, I picked up this pair of shoes. They were Crocs. Uh -huh. I had never seen them before. Nobody that I was with had ever seen them before. I bought them for, like, 10 bucks. <laughs> oh, really? I brought them home. My wife laughed at me. And about yeah. a month later, everybody in America was wearing them. Yeah. They're they great. They're, they're still great for our place up in Canada when you walk in the water with rocks and stuff. It's, you know, I'm not wearing them as a fashion statement. You never owned a pair. No, nope, never. Okay, Wheaties. They're gone. Uh, because 
people your age would don't want to bother with cereal, number one, because you'd rather eat a, a breakfast burrito or yeah. an egg sandwich or, or something, yeah, something avocado quick. Avocado toast. Or a, or a smoothie. <laughs> Oh, jewelry, That's yeah. That's gone. Yeah. So you don't care about that either? No, they're super expensive. They're like the high-end jewelry stores. Now, here's one. Cam Campbell's, Campbell's Soup is going away. And it says here uh, it's more likely to appear on a T-shirt than on the dinner table because uh, just no longer interested in the brand that once dominated the kitchen, uh, 18 to 30. So when was the last time you cracked open a can of Campbell's Soup? Uh, I would say college. So that's so a few eight years or, ago, uh, like five. One, I don't know, not you know, recently, but I haven't given up on the idea if I'm hungry enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Budweiser draft on tap. Never. Never. <laughs> never. You never had. So, never had do you drink beer ever? Once in a while. I've had it like once or twice, and that was it for me. I don't even remember what brand it was, but I just I'm not, not a, beer, a beer fan. Now Kodak is going away. That's obvious. Harley Davidson, you don't drive, ride a Harley? No, would my you, uncle did. Would you be interested in riding a Harley? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about Jello? Jello is going to be gone. Yeah, I was never a fan of Jello, so goodbye to that one. I'll yeah, how about when you, what was that when you used to do Jello shots? Jello you used shots. to suck the whole Jello yeah, thing, right? Yeah. yeah, I think I, I tried that once and gagged, but that wasn't called. Gap, G A P, Gap store. Ever go to a Gap store? Uh, like once or twice. In your life? In my life, And you're never yeah. going again? Probably not. Yeah, they didn't have that good of quality of clothes, and it just wasn't worth it. How about Chef... <laughs> if you don't like Campbell's Soup, you're probably not going to go for Chef Boyardee. I actually used to love that growing up, but yeah, I haven't had it in a long time. Well, that's time. gone, too. Uh, okay, we've got 30 seconds left. What's the last one here? Um, uh, well, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, Apple iPod, you probably have one of those, or no? I did. I had the, the mini, but after that, I, it, you have it all on your phone, so it's not worth it. Well, i got to finish my Diet Pepsi here, so I'll talk to you on Monday. Thanks, Aaron. Another good week. John Steigerwall Show is a production of AM 1250, The Answer, and Salem Media Group. Here is your new Pella Lifestyle window when open. Here it is.